What's up guys and welcome to my kitchen. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for 40 subscribers. That means a lot to me. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about five tips for matching into ophthalmology residency. Let's go. So as you probably know, after getting your undergraduate degree, which typically requires four years here in the United States, you're required to do four years of medical school. And at the end of medical school, you have to make a decision. Really, you have to make the decision in your third year of medical school about what specialty you're gonna pursue. And for the more competitive specialties like ophthalmology, plastic surgery, dermatology, those kind of specialties, you need to really make the decision even earlier so that you can start tailoring your application uh, toward that specialty. Now with some of these specialties, in ophthalmology in particular, you really don't get a lot of exposure to it in medical school. And unless you do a rotation in it or actively seek it out, you probably won't get any exposure to it other than maybe one or two lectures during your first or second year. But once you've decided that you want to go into ophthalmology, because after all, it is the greatest field, it's time to figure out how you're gonna match into the residency. Now, ophthalmology residency is one of the tougher specialties to match into. And I could do an entirely other video on why some specialties in medicine are a lot harder to match into, but to break it down very simply, it all comes down to time and money. Doctors are smart people and they've worked hard for their entire lives, probably since they were age five in kindergarten, all the way up until now when they're trying to match into residency. They've been working really hard their entire lives in an academic sense for over 20 years. And if they can find a specialty that they think is interesting, that pays them well, and that allows them to have time with their family, that's the specialty that they go for. So the specialties that really afford that, that give you a good lifestyle balance and that tend to compensate the physician pretty well are things like ophthalmology, at least historically, things like dermatology, radiology, those kind of specialties. So. The specialties that pay well and that have better lifestyles are the ones that are more competitive to get into. And it's not because they're harder to do, but you have chosen ophthalmology for the right reasons because you love the specialty and because you love operating, you wanna be in the clinic and you love working with patients. And so what are some of the key things that are gonna help you match into ophthalmology? So we'll break this down into five different tips. But the first tip I'll just broadly call academics, which are gonna be things like your grades, uh, your USMLE step scores, um, so for ophthalmology, it's a competitive specialty, so they want you to have good grades to have performed well, not only in the preclinical years during the first and second year, but also in the uh, third and fourth year during the clinical rotations, and especially if you do an ophthalmology rotation, which you need to do an ophthalmology rotation to match into ophthalmology, you need to do well on uh, that rotation. So in terms of USMLE scores, like USMLE step one, uh, the trend has been gradually increasing step scores over the past probably five to ten years, whereas it was the low two or low uh, two thirties probably about ten years ago. It's crept up and up into the mid two forties. I think the year that I matched a couple years ago, it was around uh, two forty three or so, and I think it steadily creeps up about a point each year and maybe goes down down a point, up a point, but it's gradually trended up. Now that's not to say if you score lower than a 245 that you shouldn't apply for ophthalmology. Just remember that's the mean and so you can kind of kind of boost your application with other things, some of the other tips that we'll talk about. Some of the other things in the academic category would, thing, would be things like AAO status, whether that be junior AAO, which is favored a little bit higher probably than senior AAO, but both would be good. Uh, and then things like class rank, would also be important. There's a good book called The Successful Match, which you can find on Amazon. I think it was published in 2017, and it actually lays out all the statistics of different specialties and people who matched into those specialties and their stats. So basically, you know, if, how likely were you to match if you were AAO or if you were a US graduate or uh, if you had this step score, it kind of lays those out by specialty. So that was something that I looked at before um, I was applying. It's called the successful match. And one other thing I'll lump into the academic category will be research. So it's important to have done some type of research, which most medical schools require you to do. Um, and typically you have to do a scholarly project or scholarly activity and write up a manuscript or present a poster. Um, so that's important and residencies like to see that, that you are able to you know, read through literature, understand it, compile it into your, your manuscript, and then do your own research and design a project because ultimately they want people that can further the field um, down the long run and, and add to the field. And research is a big part of that, especially in academics. So you need to have done some research. It doesn't have to be in ophthalmology. It would be better if it were in ophthalmology, 
uh, but just some type of research that you can talk about during the interview because they are gonna ask about it. So number two, assuming you have your grades in order, your academics, is uh, shadowing in ophthalmology and doing clinical rotations in ophthalmology. It'd be very hard to match into ophthalmology if you've never done a rotation in ophthalmology. So you definitely need to make sure you you seek that out, whether it's an elective during your third year or an elective during your fourth year, or you do away rotations. Personally, I did two away rotations and I matched at one of the places I did the away rotation. I think they're good to kind of get an idea of different programs and an idea of what you should look for uh, so that you don't just have one program of reference, which might be your home program, um, but you can see different things about different programs uh, and decide what you like and what you're looking for. So I think it's good if you can do at least one ophthalmology rotation. I would do more than that if possible. I did four in total, um, two in medical school, one is a third year, one is a fourth year, and then the two away rotations. Um, and if you can do those away rotations after you've done the rotations at your home school, you're obviously gonna look better and, and you know look like you know more about what you're doing when you do the away rotations, if you already had the exam skills and that kind of thing. It's also important to make sure you develop a relationship with an ophthalmologist uh, that they can write you a letter because the residency programs are going to want letters of recommendation from other ophthalmologists, someone in the field, uh, because it's a fairly small small field, they want to hear from somebody that's already in the field that they think you would be a good fit to kind of join that club. So you're going to need one, at least, uh, at least one, probably two letters from an ophthalmologist um, for your application. So develop those relationships, get to know somebody, work with them, show that you're a hard worker, um, and that you're you're interested and passionate about the field. All right, number three, let's jump to the interview itself. So when it comes to interviewing, a lot of people don't prepare for an interview in the way that you should. You should think of an interview kind of like a test and you don't wanna come off as contrived or that you, you know, prepared a speech or anything, but you need to go through a list of questions that they're likely to ask you and have at least thought about the thing you're gonna say and actually practice saying it out loud. That way when they ask you in the interview, you're able to respond in you know, an intelligent, coherent way and you're not fumbling trying to think of something and then end up saying something stupid. People do so much work in preparation for the interview. They work hard for years in medical school. They craft the perfect application and then they don't actually practice for the interview which in the end is probably one of the most important parts of matching into the residency is how the, the faculty and the staff um, at the program view you and whether or not they decide they wanna work with you. So you need to get somebody, a friend, and you need to get a list of, of interview questions which you can find in that book, uh, The Successful Match. And you need to have them ask you those questions and you need to say them out loud until you can say them coherently. And again, don't come off as contrived or anything during the interview, but be able to know the questions, know your response to them, and you know make it kind of highlight you in a nice way um, and make sure that it comes off that way to somebody who you trust. So have somebody that you know you value their opinion, and preferably somebody in medicine or somebody that's already matched into residency. And then film yourself actually answering these questions. If you don't have anybody to ask you, film yourself and then go back and watch it and think to yourself, is this somebody that I would let into my program? If I was interviewing them and they responded in this way, or you know, they came off with these mannerisms, or this was like the personality vibe that I got, would I let them into the program if I was the program director of an ophthalmology program and I was trying to pick five, six people out of you know hundreds, is this one I would pick? That's the question you have to ask yourself. So prepare for the interview, practice, practice, practice. The interview is not something you get to and that you just go kind of do haphazardly. You have to practice the interview. People don't do this. All right, number four, this one may sound a little cliche, but it's actually really true. And that is, it helps if you know someone in the field and you know someone in a program. Going through college, going through medical school, looking back, I realized I was very naive and thinking that, you know, only my academics and and whether or not I was I was actually like qualified to, to get into somewhere, to, to match into a program would be enough. But as, as, as you move on in life and you get into, you know, more specialized things and smaller and smaller specialized fields with less and less people, it really becomes about who you know. Now, obviously you're gonna have to have the academics and, you know, the stats to, to match and, and get into a program anyways. But if you, can, if you can kind of develop a relationship with somebody in that program, or if your mentor at your program knows somebody in another program where you might wanna match, ask them to reach out for you. 
ask them to make a call or send a letter, or if you're planning on doing an away rotation at that program, have them you know, kind of send a, a, a letter of introduction for you if they would. Um, try to make a relationship, uh, a connection and network with somebody in some way. So even as a medical student, you can go to conferences, you can go to the, you know, the ophthalmology meetings and meet these people. Um, and then when interviews come around, you can say, oh, you know, we know each other, um, we've met before, um, and you're, you're just going to be that much higher in, in the interviewer's mind um, as a candidate if you already know them and they have a relationship with you. So try to make connections, try to network with people, um, and don't just fall back on how you look on paper because in the end, uh, you know, people aren't working with an application, they're working with a human being, and they want to know that human being, they want to have a relationship with them and they want to uh, want to be somebody that they feel comfortable working with and that you know they enjoy being around so for number four make it your goal to try to connect with at least five people in the field of ophthalmology you know don't just have your one mentor from your medical school who who's the only only connection you know through ophthalmology make it a point during your third or fourth year of medical school to make at least some connection with five different people preferably at five different places where you think you might want to match um, and have some kind of connection with that person, whether it be through email, uh, through phone, or having met them in person at a conference uh, or at an away rotation. Make it a point to meet five people, to network with five people in the field. That's Bubbles, um, don't mind her. So do this exercise before you go interview at a program, before you go do an away rotation, before you write a letter, uh, you know, your personal statement. Sit there, Imagine that you are the program director of the program that you're interviewing for, that you're sending your application to, and think to yourself, okay, I'm going to pick five, five medical students to be in this program. What qualities, what attributes do I want them to bring to this program? And then as the applicant convey that you have those things. So the main point I'm trying to make with number five is to show the program that you have value and that you have value to give them, not just that you want to come to their program for this reason that benefits you and you want this reason for example i want to come here because you have a great retina pro retina program and i would like to be a retina fellow that's great that's how it benefits you but show them how you can give them value i want to come here because i'm very interested in research um, and i've done a lot of research and i think that i can contribute uh, to the body of research that comes out of this program. Show them something that shows how you're giving them value. People want to, sh to know how you're gonna give them value. They don't just wanna know how you're gonna take from them. So make sure you show how you're gonna give them value. Number six is a bonus tip and it's just to be likable. So when you go do these away rotations, when you go to the interviews, you don't wanna come off at, you know, like a know-it-all or try to make yourself seem smarter than you are because when that interviewer is sitting there evaluating you or you're working with people on a way rotation, what they're really looking for is, would I wanna work with this person? Could I you know, be across the hall in another exam room from this person for you know, 10, 12 hours a day? Or are they gonna drive me insane? So you, you just need to be easy going, easy to get along with, um, because really that's what it comes down to. It just comes down to small relationships um, and little day-to-day -day things. That's, that's really what people care about. I mean, if you ask if you ask the residents at any program, you know, which applicants they like, they don't care about your academics or your scores. They just want to know that you're hardworking, that you're easy to get along with, and that you're you know gonna support them and not dump work on them. So be somebody that other people want to work with. That's tip number six. All right, guys, those are just a few of my tips. I think that are kind of important to think about. Um, before you try to match into ophthalmology. Obviously, you gotta have your academics in order, uh, do well on the tests and that kind of thing. Not to say you can't still match um, and make up for it in other ways. Um, and then really just, you know, practice interviewing. Be a likable person, be easygoing, be somebody other people wanna work with, and show the program what you can offer, what value you can bring to them. If you can do those things, you're gonna match into ophthalmology. I hope you guys liked this video and found it helpful and, and got some value out of it. If you guys liked it, leave a like and subscribe down below and I'll try to come out with more videos that will help you guys and maybe you find them entertaining. Um, and leave me a comment down below if you have any video ideas or anything you want to know related to medicine, residency, ophthalmology. Um, I'd be glad to talk about them. I, you know, I made this video because somebody left a comment um, wanting, wanting specifically to know some tips for matching. Um, if I didn't cover something that you have questions about, leave a comment and I'll try to cover that in another video. 
All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD. I'll see you guys next time.